Good morning, everybody. This is Dylan here at Ellis Home and Garden in Longview. I hope y'all are all having a great morning, and I hope you had a great weekend. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning here. It's hot already, but, uh, but you know what? as hot as it's going to be. It could be. I know. Last week, guys, the heat index was like 104, 105. I got in my car and nearly had a heat stroke and died, so hopefully it doesn't get that. We're hoping for a breeze, because a breeze does wonders around here. But um, we're here today to do a little bit something different, guys. We've done a uh, wreaths in the past and teardrops uh, uh, frequently, actually, so... You know what, I thought today let's just take a break and do a cemetery arrangement just to give you a easy, fun tutorial that anyone could do uh, to make a beautiful cemetery comb for their loved one at the cemetery. And so I'm going to refresh my page, but <clears throat> the techniques and stuff that I'm gonna show you guys today, you can definitely um, continue to use those, whether you're doing a regular cemetery comb, whether you're doing one for the mausoleum, whether it's one-sided or two-sided or all the way around, you're gonna take these techniques and use them uh, to do all that. <clears throat> So let me refresh my page. And guys, don't forget everything that we're using today is available on our website at ellishomeandgarden.com along with lots of fall and Halloween decor. Um, lots of great ribbon selections, mesh selections, and um, mesh wreath forms. So don't forget to check all that out also while you're on there. And if you'll go ahead and drop your name down below, guys, with where you're watching from. We'd love to see where you're coming from in the world. And guys, I went back to Cheddar's and I have a horrible experience story to tell y'all today. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, maybe the margaritas had something to do with it, but it was god awful. So y'all wait to go hear that. And if you missed my first Cheddar story, um, you can find that on one of the videos, but it is awful. Okay. I didn't take your advice and I went to Olive Garden last week. And how'd it go? Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Really bad. Hi, Terry and Joe and Adrian, Rebecca, Diana. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so we'll get into Cheddar's in just a little bit. I need a little time to warm up and cool down before I tell that story because it's going to get me heated just like the last one did. So we're here to do a cemetery cone, guys. Again, this is something that anyone can do. You can take the techniques and the tips and tricks that I'm showing you to use this cemetery cone, and you can definitely um, do the same techniques on a different uh, item. And, you know, we've done arrangements in the past and cemetery cones, and they kind of resemble each other as far as uh, the way you secure your stems in there, the placement, the shape, and the outcome. It all kind of resembles each other, so just keep that in mind as we watch the video today. And any questions or comments that you guys have about the cemetery cone or about anything we're doing, whether it's uh, this cone or something else, leave that down below because Dina's reading through those comments in case I miss one, and she will definitely uh, let me know if I miss anything. Veronica's watching from Slovakia. Oh, hey, Veronica. I hope you're having a good morning. Hey, Kayla and Debbie and Bonnie. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, of course, is find your cone that you're going to put in the cemetery vase. Now, remember, if you have a mausoleum vase or sometimes cemetery vases are all different. Okay, they're all different. So I'm just going to use an 8-inch vase insert. Okay, they're $3.99. And this is what I use for most standard cemetery cones. Now, um, I would recommend it being a little bit too big for your hole versus um, your cemetery hole versus too small because you don't want it to be too loose in there and the wind pick up and it blow it across the cemetery because you don't want to be running down the cemetery like a quarterback uh, to get your cone, okay? So pick one that you think fits best in your vase, insert at the cemetery, and then pick your selection of flowers. This one that we're doing today is very simple and easy. We're going to be using these beautiful roses with the lilies mixed in there. It's got some grass in there and some baby's breath. We're gonna um, add some additional uh, cream color baby's breath for filler. And then also at the base, we're gonna add a little bit of our leather leaf fern, which a lot of you guys have seen this on our website and said, oh my God, what do you do with that? This is really used for cemetery work. And I'm gonna show you how you can just add a little bit of it and it really helps fill out and fluff out your cone to make it really pretty at the end. Okay? Good morning, hey, Carol. Diana. Let's see. Judy, girl, she says, uh, would you do a grapevine wreath with grapes sometimes? Absolutely, girl. I will see what I can do to get that done for you. We have grapes up in here that I haven't used in years, so they maybe they need to come out and get dusted off, and we will put those together for you. Hey, Sheila, she's coming to us from Shreveport. Hope you're having a good day, girl. Okay, so we're going to start with our flowers. When you do cemetery cones, just like with most any arrangement or wreath that we've done in the past, you want to put your large blooms first, okay? So that's why we're using these right here. Diana's asking when you use the floral tape to tape it down. Yes, Diana, you can use a floral tape or floral clay. What clay is, it's like sticky tack that you put on the wall, um, but it's sticky, and you can line the edge of your cone with it and stick that bad boy down in there, and it's going to stick and grip to the side of the cone. 
kind of like my pants do to my hips. You know, they just grip on there. So you can do the same thing with your cemetery comb using the tape or the um, clay, okay? So, select your flowers. Again, these are available online. It's one of my favorite bushes. These are, um, let's see what this is called. Rose slash tiger lily bush times eight. What that means, if you see stems in the store and it says times something, times five, times eight, that's eight stems in this particular bush, okay? So we're gonna take our wire cutters and cut these apart individually. One thing, let's just go over this before we start, okay? One thing you do not wanna do, which I've seen, it makes me cringe every time. Don't take this whole thing and stick it in there. This is not cute, it's not a good look, and it's not going to have that shape that you want your outcome to look like. If you do this, there's no placement of the flowers. They're basically already placed here for you, and that's no fun. We wanna cut these things apart and make this arrangement ourselves. So take that out of there, and we're gonna start cutting these apart. Hey Rhonda, and Deborah and Karen, and Joan. Okay, so let's cut these all apart, and then we will begin our placement. And after I get going on this, I will start to tell you guys about my Cheddar's experience. Okay, because it was tragic. Okay, so we're gonna start with our longest stem first. So let me kind of look here and see what we have. And as you can see, I kind of separate these. I don't always, but it does help, just like I say, to stay organized as you do this. So this is my longest one, and I cut them near the base of that bush. And we're always gonna start in the center, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna pick, I'm not gonna pick a lot of these, but I'm gonna pick the first one, just to give it some height. And you know what, I just realized I don't have any glue here. But I'm just doing this for display, so I'm not gonna glue right now, guys. But if you do this at home, make sure you hot glue all of your stems, so that way it secures in the styrofoam, and again, once that um, Hurricane Katrina blows up, you don't want your flowers flying everywhere or falling out of the vase, so make sure you glue them. Okay, so we're gonna start in the center of the cone, okay? Why you don't wanna start over here is because you need a starting spot in the center and then we're gonna work our way down and basically do one side at a time. So I'm gonna take this uh, one stem and stick it right here in the center of the cone, okay? So that's the first step, and then basically from there, we're gonna go down um, on one side and do one section or one side at a time. It makes it much easier. Um, you know, this is the way that I do it, and it just, I, I feel like my shape and my outcome is a lot better um, if you separate it out and do basically one section at a time. Okay? Judith is asking, will we be getting Bells of Ireland on the website? Judith, I will see what we can do. I've had a lot of requests for Bells of Ireland. We carry those here in the store in Longview and in Bossier, so. You know what, I have a pen right here. Let me write that down. I'm gonna write that down uh, so we can get that on there. Bells of Ireland online. Because they're great to incorporate in your spring, your summer, and your fall arrangements. And don't forget guys, all this stuff is available on our website, ellishomeandgarden.com. If you have any questions about how you can uh, access those items or if you're not being able to find them, go ahead and send us a direct message. We'll read through those and we will see what we can do to get that um, in your cart for you. Okay. And are you going to tell us what you got in the last shipment you received? what I get? What kind of shipment? Y'all let me know what kind of shipment. I don't forgot. Okay. So after you get the first flower in there, guys, you want to alternate. Now this bush here, as you can see, it's got the roses and the lilies in it. You don't want to put two lilies together. Uh, you want to just alternate each time as you go down the cone. Okay. So we're going to go now with the lily. I'm going to uh, pick this one too near the top so it just gives a little bit of height okay and I'm gonna place that right here now you can see if you don't come up closer you guys can see right here that um, I don't have them um, I don't have the lily higher than the rose you want to use the rose as your center point so you don't want anything to go up higher than that you want it to go down slightly at an angle so what that does is it makes your shape more defined and uh, it will look a lot better at the end you don't want your flowers all going out at different heights because um, that will ruin your shape what's the what do you what's the name of the insert this is the eight inch vase insert guys okay so we're going to continue now adding these uh, roses Lori the the ferns are leather ferns Yes, leather leaf fern, and that's what we're just gonna accent this with as we uh, get closer to finishing. Is there a problem with hot glue holding up to heat? Um, not at the cemetery I haven't found. Now, you know, if you put it in your attic, of course, it's gonna come off eventually, but I haven't had any problems at the cemetery. My uh, flowers and stems always seem to stay very secure when I, when I use that. 
Okay guys, so I've done the first side. So you can see here I started at the top with the rows and then I've come, come down at a right angle. So make sure you do that when you're doing yours. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna replicate what we did over here on this side. And then half of our comb will be done. You can see the shape and then basically from there you go in and you fill in and that's how you continue your comb. Paula's asking, do you push the leaves on the flowers up next to the flower or do you just leave them where they're at? I leave them where they're at, guys. You could do that if you want, but it does take a lot of time to do that and you're really gonna get the same, same outcome when you're done. And the great thing about having these smaller leaves already on the stem, already built on it, is it's basically a, an instant filler, okay? Because once we're done with this, we're gonna add a little bit more filler, which is the uh, beige baby's breath, but you know, it's already gonna have a lot of greenery on it because of those stems. On your last slide, you said it, that you received a new shipment and we're going to see what was in it and let us all know. It was probably dried. If it was, um, I can give you a little example. I'll come over here with them and show you. We've got some dried in that I've been working on, everybody. So here's an example. And these items are just available in store. So we've got a, a lot of great dried flowers. They're easy to incorporate into fall decor. And so these candlesticks I made, and they're great to add into um, any fall merchandise or decor. And we also have a sconce um, that, we, that I made too with those drives also. So um, if that's something that you guys would like to see in the future, go ahead and drop a comment and let me know or give me a thumbs up if drives is something that you guys will be interested in. I love them not just for fall, but for all year round. Okay, move these out of the way. Hey, Rebecca. Okay. Hi, Billy, Karen, Diane. Okay, so let's continue with this. Susan, he, <clears throat> sorry, he's adding a pick to the end of the flowers. Yes, guys, this is a steel pick machine. You don't have to pick it. I just do it on the top just to give it a little bit more height. But you, this is, uh, the stems are so small on these flowers that you don't have to uh, necessarily pick each one. Debra gets a good quality, like at Lowe's or somewhere that he uses your, your wire cutters. Oh, yes, guys, get these at Lowe's, Home Depot. On the uh, electrical aisle, you'll find some wire cutters. And I think I paid $30, and that seems expensive, but if you get the cheaper ones, it's very hard to cut your um, flowers. Jennifer, you can send it through Messenger. That's probably the best way to send pictures. Yeah, guys, anybody who wants to send pictures of their products or of their designs or creations, I love seeing them. It really makes my day. So send those pictures in the DMs, guys. Um, and I will go back and look at every single one like I always do and try to respond to you as quick as possible. Hey, Cindy, Kelly, and Donna. Girl, Kelly, I wish we could. She says, can we open a store in Ohio? I hope so, girl, one day. Okay, so this is where we're at so far. So again, I'm gonna give you a little recap for everyone because I know some people just joined. And if you did just join, my name is Dylan and I'm here at Ellis Home and Garden at the Longview, Texas location. Welcome to our um, live video. We're doing a um, cemetery cone today. We started with an eight inch base insert and now we're going back and we're adding our florals, which the first thing you wanna do is add your um, largest stem first. Had the one at the top, I went down on one side, and then I went down on the other. So you can now see your shape or your outline, so to speak. Act like this is like uh, color by numbers or connect the dots, basically. You have your outline drawn, and now we're going to go back and we're going to fill in with our flowers. So. Yes, Diane, I'm here tomorrow. Okay, guys, I'm going to turn it this way so you can see. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to continue to make a row, just like this one we're going to alternate. So I have this... Um, rows. I don't want to put it right here up against this rose. I'm going to kind of go to the right side, right by that lily, just like that. Okay? And then I'm going to go down from there, alternating my florals. So I'm going to use the lily. And make sure you kind of use that outline in that shape so that you get that shape all the way around and one side is not larger uh, than the other. Terry Lynn says, hey, hey. Hey, Terry, how are you? Girl, I am dying because I finished Handmaid's. Remember I told you? And I can't wait to see what happens on season three. So I have nothing to watch now at night. I've been watching Hallmark Christmas Channel because it's Christmas in July all month long. So I've been watching it all month long. I'm so depressed because all these movies, it's just kind of, some of them, it's very good movies, but sometimes you just want to like, I don't know. It just I need a drink or something. 
But, you know, they're also predictable, but I just have to keep watching. I watched one last night called Christmas Getaway. And, of course, you know, the two people end up at the same hotel, and they fall in love, and they have a daughter. Then my wife, you know, died in a car crash or whatever. And um, so it's really good. So y'all check that out on Hallmark. Elaine, he does have Mark come on periodically. Yes, I see Elaine's name now. Uh, we try to do one once a week, guys, if, if, uh, if we can. And Mark comes on and he gives you any knowledge or information that, about plants it, and he answers any questions that you guys have. So stay tuned for that. And if you'd like another plant video, give me a thumbs up, guys. Let me know. I'll give Mark that feedback and we will see what we can do to get that um, going for you. Okay, we got. She's binge watching season one again. Who? Terry? Terry. Terry. I know. I need to watch it again. Okay, so I had the second row done, guys. You can see here how those line up. So I'm going to turn to the side also, and you see how they line up, and your shape stays intact. These aren't sticking out farther than that first row we did. They're the same length, same level, and they lay the same way. Okay? So you don't feel left to right and front to back. You're feeling in the same direction as the first row? Yes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So again, I'm going to cut these all apart. Make sure you do this, guys. It makes your shape and your outcome so much better than if you just stick the whole uh, bush in there. Okay? Hey, Rosemary. Donna, me too. It, I mean, it really does make you happy because there's no, you know, I, like I say, you watch Lifetime, they'll throw a freaking death in on you on the, on the Christmas movie, and they'll have a happy ever after, and then a train crash. And they don't do that on Hallmark. It's always happy. No one's crying. So, it's my kind of show. Roberta, I think that thing's been here as long as the building's been here. Oh, yes. I don't even know where that came from. We've had it, and I just took advantage of it because my cone fits perfect in there. So, um, that's what I use to hold my styrofoam. But you can find a vase at any store, and you can use that to um, hold and secure your styrofoam as you go. So, let me tell y'all. We're just going to go through now, and we're going to uh, fill in. But let me tell y'all about cheddars. I haven't even told Nina about this. I was waiting to do it now so she could hear it too. So the other day on Saturday, I decided I was going to lay in the pool all day. So me and Josh's mom was in town. So we were house sitting. So, you know, we laid in the pool all day and chilled. It was me, my mom, Josh's mom, and Josh. And we laid in the pool all day and um, nine o'clock rolls around and I decided I'm hungry. Well, we were hungry, okay? We had to eat something. We'd been having um, some drinks. And so we were like, you know, we need to have something to eat. So stupid me, I decided, let's go try Cheddar's again. You know, if you missed my Cheddar story, guys, scroll back a while to the Lantern video. There's great information about Lantern's, but there's also a fun story on there about my experience at Cheddar's where, um, let's just say my mom got uh, drowned in wine and uh, literally, I mean, three glasses on the tray, doused her. Um, she looked like that girl from the ring. Okay, so anyway, I decided I was going to try it again. I have been there in probably six months or so. So, I went. I called in my order, and uh, we ordered our food, and they told me 15 or 20 minutes. It was Saturday night. That's totally understandable. You know, I was like, even if I had to wait a little bit longer, it's Saturday night. They're busy. It's cool. So I waited 25 minutes, and I drove over there. I got to the bar, and I said, hi, my name is Dylan. I'm here to pick up my order, and uh, she said, well, it's not quite ready. And I said, girl, it's no problem. I said, you know, I understand it's Saturday night. Things were looking up. I was like, oh, my God, this is going to be a good experience. <laughs> so then, that's when, you know, you need to run, Okay. So then, um, she brings my food out, and um, she got she starts going over my. She was gonna put it in a bag, and I said, no, 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 no. I learned from Taco Bell a long time ago. You always go through your order and make sure you have your food. So um, she started going through my food, and I said, well, ma'am, I was supposed to have um, an order of the shrimp and the salmon, and I only have shrimp in here, and I was supposed to have two side salads. Where's that at? And she was like, oh, well, I forgot. And she's like, well, let me go see. And she said, I'll fix your salmon. And she came back out. She said, it's gonna be two minutes. 25 minutes later, I'm still sitting there, and um, I say, can I speak to the manager? Now, I'm not exaggerating. 15 minutes later, here comes the manager. And I decided I was gonna take a different approach, because I used to use scream and yell, but I've just grown. And so I'm just, I thought I was gonna take a deep breath and take another approach. So I just told the manager, you know, hi, I called in my order, it's been over a freaking hour, and I'm still sitting here, and I don't have my food. And I said, they told me it was gonna be two minutes on the salmon. I said, they must've had to go down to Lake of the Pines and kill the freaking fish and come back and cook them because I still don't have my food. And I said, you know, I've been here before, I was gonna give you guys another chance, and it just did not work because I still don't have my food. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. 
I'm gonna take care, of course you are gonna take care of this because I've been sitting here an hour and my food is now cold. She brings the salmon out, guys, and I also gotta order a spinach dip. Um, Cause that's one thing at, at Cheddar's that they really have good spinach dip. So I was so irritated with all the stuff. I got my food, I stayed calm. I told the lady, thank you for doing this for me. I won't be back. And um, I get in the car, I get home. I get ready to eat my spinach dip and guess what? There was no chips, okay? I was so mad at the restaurant, I didn't realize she didn't give me any chips. So on top of all that mess up and her, her going over my order, she still didn't give me my chips. So never again will I step foot in Cheddar's. I don't care how bad I want spinach dip, I will go down and buy some at Sam's. I'm not doing it. Can't do it. So what happened to Olive Garden? Mm -mm. <laughs> I go in and I get the little server, the hostess little girl. Mm -hmm. Took her 15 minutes to seat me. Okay, was she ignoring you though? No. Because she ignored me. Because she went, kept going back looking. Well, mm -hmm. let me go look here. And she goes to the same spot to look. Mm -hmm. Well, let me go look here. And she went to the same spot. And I'm going, can I sit on this side? There's mm -hmm. nobody over here on this side. Mm -hmm. We don't have servers for over there. I don't care. Seat One me. One server? They can't walk over there and seat you? And so they finally seat me in the bar. I wanted the soup and salad. Uh -huh. That's all I wanted was soup and salad. Not hard. It was right at 3 o'clock. So it was time for the cha their changeover. Mm -hmm. That's what I stood up there 15 minutes. Yeah. And the salad, you know, is already pre-done. Yeah. And the soup. It's yeah. in a bowl. Oh, I got a discount, did you? No. <laughs> oh, I would have. Okay. So, guys, we've got this done now. Let me, uh, this one side. Let me scroll down so I can see everybody's comments. Were you ever given a bill and never been served your food? Uh, no, I have not, <laughs> but I wouldn't put it past that happening. Okay, so we finished one side, okay? So let me, let me turn this around and show you. We started with an outline, so it looks similar to this, and then we went one row at a time and we filled it in. Now on the side, you can see all of the flowers are at the same level, and it really does help your shape and make it turn out much more um, what's the right word? Symmet symmetric, okay? It's much more symmetric when you do it one row at a time. Okay? So any questions or comments, guys, go ahead and drop those down below. Even if it's not about this particular arrangement, if it's about design, it's about something in the future, we're here to answer those questions and interact with all of you. And thank you for joining this us, guys. Comment on your hair. The chair looks really good today. Oh, my God. Listen, guys, I went and got my hair done yesterday, you know, and I got this new barber. His name's Adam Rush. He's super good. And, um... It looked so good when I left there, but this morning, you know, I was um, dragging, probably from all those Hallmark movies that I watched, and so I woke up, and I just didn't fix it the way I should have, and now it's sticking up on the side, so it looks a little bit like Buzz Lightyear, but, you know, we're going to just go with it, but I got my part back intact, and the camera's frozen on the screen, so my part is still intact, I can tell right here, but um, thank you so much for the comments about my hair. I got to cut it all off. It was getting really long and I was just sick of it and I walked in there and I said, you know, cut off as much as you can where I can still comb it over to the side, you know, like do my signature thing, but it doesn't stick up everywhere. Well, he did that, but then I didn't fix it this morning, so I look like I got run over by a lawnmower, so I'm just going to go with it. Trudy, these are online. Yeah, guys, everything we use in our videos from now on is going to be available online because we want this stuff to be accessible for you to purchase. We also have great Halloween decor in there. I showed you that in a video a couple weeks ago, along with mesh items because a lot of you um, make beautiful mesh wreaths, and so we have a wide selection of mesh for all seasons along with ribbon as well. So make sure everyone uh, goes on there to check that out. Would you do the same process for regular flowers in a vase? Yes. You want to make sure you keep a shape. Shape is very important when doing floral designs, floral arrangements. If you don't have a good shape, um, your arrangement's not going to look right because you're going to have flowers sticking all over the place. And when they grow, even out of the ground, they don't stick all over the place. Most of the time, whether it's a bush or whether it's just a certain plant, they all um, stay in one shape with the, the flowers going out in one thing. So make sure you do that. So I'm just filling in here on the back side, as you can see. I started on the right, and I'm just going to go around, and I'm going to complete this back side on this cone. And if you want to do a mausoleum cone, most of the time mausoleums, excuse me, there's um, a wall. You know, the vase goes in a wall and so it's got to be flat back. So you would just stop. Where I, where I did a minute ago and I showed you the back, you would just stop here and what you could do is you could take some leather leaf and you could put this on the back and just make a backdrop like this. So this is what it would look like. And then you could place that in the mausoleum holder right up against that wall 
and you'd be good to go. But this one we're gonna do all the way around. How many bundles will you use? Five. Five bundles of flowers. And you could probably get away with four, but um, I don't do sparse. So I like it to be as full and uh, as elegant as possible. And sometimes you have to use a few more flowers. I believe these flowers though are like 60 off, so they're only $4 for a bundle. So four times five, it's only about 20 bucks. And then the cone's $3.99. So um, you don't have to break the bank to make a beautiful cemetery cone. Our cemetery flowers at Ellis, I'm very fortunate they're always on sale. So you get more bang for your buck. Pat, depending on how strong the winds are, yes, they could blow out. Yes, I would always put glue in there. I'm just doing this for demonstration, so I'm not gluing right now, but I definitely would. Sound like I just clipped my fingernails, but uh, <laughs> I didn't. Okay, so here's what we have so far. Just wanna keep giving you an update on the progress as we continue to work our way around. Somebody's asking about Morticia. Oh, uh, Morticia, honey, she's over here intact. Let me show you her. Uh, she's right here. You can come over here, I wanna move her. She's kind of um, fragile. Uh, she's still got to work on that shirt, honey. She's always trying to show off her skin, and this is not the area. But she's got a new haircut. I don't know if you guys noticed. She got a side bang with a little flip. And um, she's got, you know, these tassel earrings on. So it's kind of um, risky. But she likes to live on the edge. So she's still here intact, honey. And if you guys are watching us and thinking y'all are weird, well, this is just Morticia. She is our mascot here at Ellis for our design videos. I don't even know how she came to be. But she's here. And she's still got that pouty mouth. She's still pissed off. <laughs> but you know what? I gave her a new haircut. So she better learn to smile. And I got her these new tassel earrings. So she's still here. Okay. So we're gonna continue now on our comb. Hey, Tanya. I know, everybody says she needs a new shirt. I swear to God, next time I'm gonna get the full body in here. I'm going to uh, hook her together, and <laughs> glue her legs on, and I will give you a full body shot with a whole new outfit, I promise. Should I buy her some high heels or something? It's weird. It's weird. You know they have those little heels at Walmart for the girls that dress up in, you know? Joanne, you can spray them to keep them from fading. Yeah, um, that's a good point. I'm glad Joanne said that. You know, a lot of the times when you put things at the cemetery, there's no shade. Well, a lot of the times. And um, so you can use Scotch Guard. And what that does is it just kind of helps repel the fading and repel any rain damage on there. And it keeps them from bleeding. Because sometimes if your flowers get saturated, they can bleed. And you don't want that to bleed all over your stone. Um, because you pay a lot of money for that. And you don't want color all over it. So... Um, you can do that as well. Okay, so as we continue, I'm going to show you the back side again. You can see the holes. That's what we have not put the flowers yet, so I'm just going to continue adding those in. Hey, Terry. Hope you're having a good day. Hey, Peggy and Dina. Okay, we're going to add another one here. They're just making all kinds of noise out there. It sounds like we're building something up in here. So, I'm gonna add these last few. Actually, we might use four. Yeah, we're gonna use four bushes, guys. I told y'all five, I told you wrong. So we used four, and you see how full this is. And you can see from the top, everything goes down at that angle angle that we uh, did at the beginning, and we followed our outline, and we continued to follow it. And um, then you get a perfect, beautiful shape. Okay. Katie's asking, are you self-taught, or have you been a floral designer certification course? Hey, Katie, I have no certification. Um, I mean, I could probably, I need to print me off one on Microsoft Word. Uh, no, I just kind of self-taught. You know, I started when I was a kid. Um, first thing I always was addicted to was Christmas lights and uh, anything that lit up. Um, shocker. So anyway, <laughs> I went <laughs> I went up to the lights, you know, and uh, did that. But then I realized I can't be climbing all of this onto the roof. I'll be flying off of there. So um, I decided I was going to just try indoor Christmas. I used to come to Ellis, actually, when I was a kid, and they used to have beautiful stuff. And I used to think, God, I wish I could do that. And... Um, I went to a Christmas store in Dallas one time and I saw a wreath that they did and I went home and I tried to replicate it and I just kind of put my own flair on it and I created my own technique and then from there I just kind of built my um, skills and my 
my ideas. I would just get on idea, uh, Pinterest, get ideas, and then take what I saw and kind of put my own twang on it. And then that's how I just kind of created my own look, if you if you will. Uh, so that's how I did that. And then I've been here at Ellis for eight years, and I actually wasn't a, a designer when I first started here. Um, it took about two years in, and I finally became a designer. So for about six years now, I've been back here um, designing and, and decorating and doing um, displays and all that kind of stuff. So it's fun because every day is different. You never know what you're going to do. Some days are more challenging, which I like sometimes. Like the other day, uh, we do custom work here at Ellis at all of our locations, and we have designers at all of our locations. So if you want something done custom, bring it in, and we'll see what we can do to create something for you. We can work with any budget. And so somebody brought in a um, bull, was it a bull head, I think, a bull head, had the big horns on it. Did you see this? Mm -mm. And it was hanging up her baby. She was having a baby, and uh, it was like boho. That was the theme. And so there was like turquoise and blue. So she painted the bull head turquoise, and um, it had rhinestones all over the front. It was kind of cool. And so I took the rhinestones off the top, and I put a piece of styrofoam with some moss, and I actually made an arrangement on top of the bull head, and that's going to hang over the baby bed. Hope it doesn't fall off. Let's help we secure it, okay? But it's really cool, and it's gonna look really cool with the boho look. So um, maybe we have we had some bullheads in here one time. I'll have to mm -hmm. we have to do one of those on the video one day um, because I looked it up on Pinterest because I had never heard what she was talking about. And people do them all the time, and they were really pretty. They had florals on top of the bullhead, and they use it for decoration, especially in uh, baby rooms and and all kinds of stuff. So. Joan is asking, can you add a bow to cemetery vases? Definitely. What you do is put your bow on a on a pick, like a, a wooden floral pick with some wire. Stick that in there. I've done it in the past, guys. And if you want some more um, information about cemetery arrangements, I've done saddles and cones in the past. You can scroll back on our video tab on our Facebook page and locate all those past videos. And there's lots of information uh, that will hopefully be beneficial to you about um, cemetery work. Candy's as it says, I sent a picture of the fall wreath I did similar to the one you made. Was it really you who looked at it and commented? Yes, I'm the one who uh, comments back on the photos, Candy, I promise. And it was really, was very pretty. I remember, remember it. Um, so, yes, I do. Okay, so now we're going to take our leather leaf. And I'm just going to show you a quick trick that you can do to create a base or filler on this that's really going to help make this look more complete and more finished. Okay, so the cemetery um, leather leaf comes like this, and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little leaves on it, okay? I'm gonna cut off the bottom two leaves. I'm gonna do it all at one time, just like that, because they're a little bit too long. Hey, Susan. Okay. Darlene's asking about lanterns for fall. Who said that? Darlene. Hey, Darlene. Um, excuse me. Guys, I'm gonna blow you up with fall. I mean, I'm talking about blow you up. We're still getting in our merchandise, and so as soon as we get that in and it's available and it's on our website, so that way anything I use is available for you guys to purchase, I will be doing lanterns for every freaking season. Okay, fall, Halloween, Christmas, Thanksgiving, everything, I promise. So just stay tuned, guys. As soon as we get more fall in, um, we're not going to be doing spring anymore at all. It's all going to be fall for a while. And then, you know, as we continue to decorate our Christmas rooms and transform that into a wonderland that I'm going to be giving you, behind the scenes looks and access to all of that as we decorate because I can't wait to see you. Um, I can't wait for you guys to see the behind the scenes work that we do to create um, the presentation that we try and have for you guys. Okay, so we're gonna cut these off and I kind of curved it so you can see right there. It just looks more natural to me than straight. Um, and so we're going to put that right under here um, at the base of the flowers and it's kind of curved down so you can see it creates a, a great uh, layer underneath the flowers. And I'm going to do that now all the way around the base. I'm going to go ahead and curve these. It makes it just a little bit easier. And these are all on wire. So as you can see, it's really easy to curve them. And that's one of the big reasons that I like to use um, artificials is because they're easy to bend and shape. And with real flowers, you can break them very easily. Okay. So here's the side with it on there. And here's the side without it. So you can see it just creates a little bit more of a final look to it. And that's why I like to use this. You just want to go around the whole thing. Just like that. So on the bottom, here's what it looks like. Okay. And then from the top, you know it created just a great filler around the base. 
our foundation. Let's use that. It's our foundation that our building our house on, basically. So we put that on there, and then we went up with the florals. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Susan. Okay, so now we're gonna add some more filler, which is our beige, or I call it, I call, I call it off white, baby's breath. Baby's breath is used a lot of the time for weddings, um, but you can also use it in cemetery. We use it a lot in cemetery, especially with rose arrangements, because it just creates a pretty filler that you can add with anything. Now you can see our bushes that we have already have some baby's breath in them. But that ain't enough for me, honey, so we're gonna add a little bit more and just spruce this thing up before we call it done, okay? So you can definitely, if you hate baby's breath, some people do, sometimes I don't like it either. Um, use something else, use a small flower, something with a small bloom on it. Anything like that will work great as a filler. Don't use anything drapey unless it's near the base because it will ruin your shape and it'll be draping through there and that's not what you wanna do. You work so hard to get this shape and it's intact and so you wanna keep it there. So use any drapey, flowers or floral at the bottom or the base and use something with a small head or a small bloom for filler. And so I chose this baby spray because there's already some in here so I'm just going to incorporate this into what's already there. Sherry, it is a leather leaf fern. Hey Wendy, hi Donna. Yes, this is a leather leaf fern. What happened to it? It's right here. It's available online. Also guys, ellishomeandgarden.com. Everything we're using is available on there plus so much more. We also have the Probo on there. Last week I did some bows on there. That is, that's available on there also. Okay, so when you're using filler, you want it to be used exactly like it sounds, as filler. You don't want it to be overwhelming, overpowering. You can definitely do too much filler and then it ruins your shape also. So keep all of these things in mind. Don't get excited and happy or drunk off your wine you're drinking and do too much. So um, this is clearly too big. You don't want to stick this whole thing in there. Um, that's just going to be overpowering. So you want to um, definitely cut this apart. And I'm going to put cut it three times. Okay. Mary Jane, we do saddles also. So I've got I cut it apart three times here, and I, I left the uh, this one a little bit longer because I want it to go near the top of my uh, arrangement. Okay. So I'm going to pick this. This is where your pick machine comes in handy. Is because. When you get your florals done, all those leaves we were talking about, or someone made a comment about them earlier, they're all in there, it looks really good, but it's sometime it covers up your styrofoam, so it's hard to get just a regular stem in there. So if you put a pick on there, it's a metal pick, it's sharp, um, you can poke your eye with it, um, you don't wanna do that. It makes it sharp and you can just stick it through those leaves if there's some on the base. So that's why I do this. And I'm gonna start it here at the top, and I'm just going to add that baby's breath in there. Now, do you do wedding flowers? I don't, guys. I'm going to make a confession. Y'all don't get mad. I hate weddings, okay? I hate wedding flowers. Uh, it's just a pain. We don't do any, at, at Longview Store, we don't do any cemetery, I mean, we don't do any uh, wedding boutonnieres, corsages, or anything like that. Now, arrangement, definitely, I can do that, but I just, I can't do it better. I just, I mean, I can, but I just, I can't. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, so one thing you'll remember, and this goes with everything, just like with the Christmas garland, or a Christmas tree, you don't put it up and just walk away and put your decorations on it. That is god awful, okay? Make sure you fluff it out and give it life, okay? So just because I stuck that um, baby's breath in there, don't just walk away and call it a done deal. You wanna go back and touch every single thing you put in your arrangement to place it in the correct position that you want so that way well, you have a good outcome in your arrangement. So that's what I've done there. As you can kind of see, I've bent it and you can see right here at the top, I put it right there in these spaces, okay? So make sure you uh, pay attention to that as you continue adding your florals and your baby's breath uh, throughout the arrangement. Is the filler supposed to be shorter than the main florals? Yes, you, you, it does, but it doesn't, okay? I, in this particular arrangement, I'm gonna use the outline I already have. So I'm gonna stick the, the filler in there and it's not gonna come out past the, the main floral, which is the roses and the lilies. So it's gonna go down into the arrangement. You can make it come out um, farther, it just depends on what look you're trying to achieve because I've seen some arrangements that are absolutely beautiful where it's like this and they have long sprouty things coming out all over and I've done that as well, especially grasses. You can take like some artificial fountain grass and incorporate into your arrangements. Look, look at this. See like this? It's sticking out longer than the florals and that's okay. It looks good, but you definitely don't want like all of this sticking out of here because then it will look like your hair when you wake up in the morning. So 
you want it to keep it as uniform and as classy as possible. It's, you know, that's how I look at it. When I do an arrangement, I step back, always step back from what you're doing um, and look at it to make sure that, you know, your shape is still good and that's what you're going to go for. Barb, yes, this is a bush that he's using. Yeah, Barb, this is a bush. You can find it on our website. This is what it looks like. It's got eight individual stems on it. And that's what I actually uh, cut apart to make this cemetery come. Lori, this will be on our Facebook page. You can go under the videos and you can watch it. Hey, Jackie. How are you, girl? I just saw your comment. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Joan. Jackie, we're doing a little cemetery today, girl. We got to work on those flowers at the cemetery because when I walk through, you know, I secretly judge. And so I'm constantly looking around like, oh, look at her. She did the most. That'd be me. Okay, so now I kind of did one little area with the baby's breath. You can see, um, here's the area I did. Here's the area I haven't done. So you can kind of see what it adds um, once you put that filler in there. And it just makes it look a little bit fuller, which is the whole point. And you don't have any like gaps or spaces. Um, so that's why I do that. Hey, Donna. Girl, it's okay. Better late than never. That's what I like to say. Except for when Josh shows up, I'm like, you're late again, I'm like, freaking kill you. <clears throat> That's one thing, you know, he's always late. It doesn't matter where we go, late, late, late. Hope you're watching, Josh, late. Anyway, hey, Catherine and Becky and Terry. Oh, God, Jackie, what did you order? Let me know what your challenge is, Dean, if you see it, will you let me know? Because I might miss it over here. Jackie from Jackie's Reese, guys, she challenged me to do... Because she ordered four of them. What'd she order? I don't know. It was I have a new challenge to you because I ordered four of them. Oh, Lord. Um, she challenged me to do the Kentucky Derby hat. And it, turned, it was something out of my comfort zone, like I told y'all a minute ago. I do like a challenge. So I'm thankful that she gave me that. Um, and uh, I just did my best. And I think it turned out pretty good. I liked it. Yeah. It was fun. It's something different that I normally wouldn't do on a day-to-day -day basis. This pick machine sounds like a, a register. Okay. So I'm going to continue adding just like this. And I have a random question. So I have a lot of people watching now. So if you know what this is, um, leave a comment and let me know. So if you're obsessed with Christmas like I am, then you... I love vintage stuff, and they used to have a guy named David Hamburger who made, and it's H-A-M-B-E-R-G-E-R, -E -E who made all of the animated vintage Christmas stuff. Her, her, I ordered the squirrel pumpkins and the harlequin ones. I challenge you to make a centerpiece with them. Okay, girl. We will do that as soon as I get some fall. I promise. Let me write that on my list over here. I have done. Can you do a casket blanket? I will put that down here too. Casket, blanket, or spray. We haven't done a casket spray, so that's a good one too. Okay, so the vintage Christmas stuff, it's called David Hamburger. What he does is he makes animated displays. So he has like the, the reindeer, everything is animated. So it's like a real reindeer. It looks like a real reindeer. It's got fur, but their head moves, or he's got elves that are vintage, and their, you know, their arms move like they're... Have you guys ever heard of that, or do you have some of that in your... Uh, decor at your home they're very hard to find they're discontinued i don't think they're in in production anymore so if you guys have heard of that and i'm not the only one i love that stuff let me know if you have one if you do send me pictures of what you have um, because they're very hard to find and i love to look at that stuff he used to make displays and he would do them custom for businesses in store windows at christmas they'd have like elves and and uh all kinds of stuff everything's animated they're really cool and they have some down in henderson at this place called jordan's yeah, that make sure you leave a comment and let me know Okay. The hey, wood Frida. skeleton and pumpkin that has trick or treat on them. Do you know how big they are? I do not, guys. But send me a message, and I'll go through and I will leave a. Um, I will answer it. I'll let you know the dimensions and the height and the length of it. Jillian, I'm sorry. My my throat's a little sore today. She wants me to talk louder. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Any ideas for football season tailgating? Oops, it just went. Stories, motorhome decorations. Um, I don't do a lot of football or anything like that besides the homecoming moms, which we're going to do a homecoming video sometime. So if you guys want to see homecoming videos, 
give me a thumbs up and let me know because I love mums because you can just do the freaking most and uh, they're gaudy and that's what's so fun about it. So if you'd like to see that, drop a comment and let me know. But, you know, I will think about what we can do for, you know, patriotic, I mean not patriotic, football and school stuff like that because I have a lot of requests uh, for those items also. Ooh, a lot of people want to have homecoming mums. I'm going to have to bust them out. Rita, you can go back and hit the video tabs on the Facebook and watch from the beginning. Who said that? Rita. Oh, they said Reba. I was about to say, I love Reba. That TV show, you like the show? Love it. It was on, uh, I've seen it so many times, but it was on the other day um, and I watched it. Have you seen uh, Shameless? You know, that's where Steve Howey's at now. The guy that played Van. Mm -hmm. And he's like buffed to the max. Didn't even look the same. Jackie's asking, can you take us on a tour when you get done to show us the size of some of the Halloween signs that are available? Yes, I can do that, Jackie. Just so that she can do it for ordering? Yes, absolutely. I'll get my yardstick and we will go on a thing like Tim the Tool Man, honey. Okay. So now I've added my filler. So what that did is it just gave this look, I mean gave this arrangement more of a complete look. So I used three stems of the baby, baby breath filler. So now we have a complete cemetery comb. So again, I put that um, leather leaf at the bottom and it just created a great foundation. Here's from the top view. And from the sides, I used four of these bushes that you can find on our website, along with three of the baby's breath filler. And I used half of a bush, actually, of the um, leather leaf. So that's that, guys. So if you have any questions or comments and we haven't got to them, drop them down below. We'll definitely go back and read them, answer anything you have. And if you've done designs, if you've done wreaths, creations, send us a message with your pictures because I would love to see. Trace is asking, I was just wondering if green rearrangements were still up to date for the top of kitchen cabinets. Definitely. And actually, you don't have to make an arrangement, girl. You can just take a bush of greenery that's kind of drapey, like ivy or fern or something like that, and kind of just set it up there and drape it. And I do a lot of that in the store just to give things a pop of color, especially on display cases or hutches in your dining room, uh, stuff like that. Another item, you guys told me that you wanted these, and so we put them online, um, which are these Paula Dean uh, gift set dishes. So these are available on our website, guys, at ellishomeandgarden.com, along with a lot of other products. They're great for gifts, and we sell a ton of these in the store, and I've showed you these, and you asked for them. So this one says, happiness is homemade, y'all. I wish I had and something homemade. it includes... Yeah, it includes um, original cornbread mix. I'm going to actually open it up and show you what you get when you open it. So you get the cornbread mix, which sounds delicious, and... Um, this cute freaking baking dish. These would be great for gifts, guys. Um, teacher presents, you know, it's first of the year's coming up. So teacher presents, it gives you instructions on how, how to burn it and uh, <laughs> everything like that. So it's in the box, ready to go. So y'all check those out and let me get a price for you. $24.99, so it's really not bad. Again, great gift giving idea, okay? And you can reuse the, the yeah, use this box, honey, for a gift. Re-gift it. Just put your underwear in there. Give it to your husband. You know, I mean, his underwear. You're going to get him for Christmas. And uh, it makes a great box that you can just re-gift. Okay? So, y'all want to go on a tour real quick? Um, let's take a quick tour. And I'm going to show you around. Um, and those are online? What? Yes, the um, Paula okay. Dean dishes are online also. We're going to swing by my desk because I'm going to go ahead and get my yardstick. Like I told y'all, we're going to measure it. I hope I can read them, read the yardstick because things have happened in the past and I haven't been able to. Oh, hey, Karen. Just showing some of the fall stuff that's yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah, you can see we started doing lots of fall decor here at the store, guys. We've got lots of wreaths and ar arrangements and designs made up. And again, we do do custom work. So if you want to come in and bring something, we can definitely add to it. Someone was asking about Bells of Ireland. Right here, guys, I incorporated them into this wreath. And at the top, too, you can kind of see up here at the top, I incorporated them also. This is a good idea. This stick, I can just point to everything. Okay.
we're going to measure and I'm going to show you. You guys, we're getting lots of Christmas decor. It's going to be uploaded to the website very soon, I promise. Y'all are a great team. You and the camera girl. Love y'all. Teamwork makes the dream work. Okay, here's the signs that we're talking about. These cute Halloween signs right here. They're 22 inches long and 10 inches wide. We have them in the skeleton too. You can see right there. We have this item available online. These are super fun. These are available online. They're little shelf sitters, so they're fun. Me too, the little mummies you can put around. Look at this stuff here. Oh my God, I haven't seen these. Yeah. Cute. And all of these little signs and plaques are available too, guys. These are the ones Jackie was talking about with the Harlem and the swirls on them. So we'll definitely do a centerpiece with those and with these striped pumpkins here. All you have to fear is fear itself and spiders. Oh, God, I know. All right, guys. Well, I want to thank you for watching today. Any more questions or comments that you have, make sure you drop them down below or send us a private message. We'll definitely go back and read each and every one of those and answer them to the best of our knowledge. And uh, stay tuned because we've got lots of exciting product and merchandise coming in the doors as we speak. We're going to get that uploaded as soon as we can with our website. So uh, don't forget our website, guys, ellishomeandgarden.com. All the products used today are on there along with a lot of other great stuff. All right, guys, we will see you soon, hopefully with another Greenhouse video because you guys have been requesting that. And so I will go tell Mark and we will see what we can do. All right, guys, everybody have a great afternoon. Bye.